Hi everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch and today we're gonna build the mantle. In my last video where I was, I think I was painting this mantle in the last one, um, I told you and showed you how I'm gonna be putting a mantle right across there to kind of break up this intense amount of brick going on. Um, and so today what we have to do, I will show you, just one sec. So up here you can see this shelf and originally our plan had been to put two of these shelves here but after we put this in we decided it would be too busy with two shelves and then we also decided we wanted to put a mantle over here so we took one of the shelves um, so this is one of the shelves here and you can see that it's missing how up here it has the two middle legs here so we've had to take them off because um, you can see there's the vents for the heat over here and where those extra legs were were running in the wrong places what we've done is bought down here you can see another piece of fur. This is fur and this piece is also thicker and will be a little bit more sturdy. So we are going to take this off or take these legs off and put them onto this one and turn this into a mantle. One of the other problems with this one that we, and why we couldn't use this is because it was designed to be a shelf like this. So it has a little piece sticking out here but on this side, it's flat against this chimney. So this little piece is not sticking out on that side and we wanted them to match, obviously. So, like you can see that here, this little piece and not on the other side. So we're going to go down to the shop and I am going to do the sawing and putting this together and drilling into the masonry and all of this because I am wanting to learn more skills. So one of the things that I wanted to do for 2018 was to build my skill base. One of the skills that I'm going to be learning with this is proper measuring, which I have mentioned before I am awful at, and also using some of the saws, some of the power tools. I've used some before, but I'm uncomfortable with them mostly just because I'm inexperienced and I'm always afraid that I'm going to cut my finger off, which I think is a legitimate fear when you are working with a giant saw. <laughs> so let's head down there and get this measured and cut up. This is the old planer that Dan and I bought forever ago. We were trying to remember when we bought it or what we bought it for, but neither of us can remember. We've done a lot of things with it over the years, like making trim, um, like wood trim and things like that for in the house, but we don't remember what our initial project was that we bought this for. You know you're getting old when. Do you know what this does for? No. It, there's a blade inside of this and you run wood through and then you can make it like thinner. So, you're in that so we're just gonna make this thin. Over there. Like that. It's been sitting around for a while unused, so Dan just blew it out with his air compressor just to make sure that there's nothing nothing stuck in there and chunks of anything or whatever that are gonna come flying out. So we have to, what's the size we're going for on this? I think it's an inch. An inch? Let's go see if it even works. So, <laughs> do I turn uh, it on? Can you move it towards the end of the table saw more? Does it work? That does not look straight, does it, Aurora? No. <laughs> I can't tell because I'm wearing these safety glasses See, again. this is the reason why you can't measure. I really shouldn't be measuring. No, that looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good enough for a person who can't measure. That's right. You can learn how to do anything. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay, so where do I cut this? You look at the piece that you want left. Yeah. Make sure it's, you know, the blade is the you got on this side of the line. It's going to be too short. Yeah. Okay, so, so you want to make sure that your blade is... Is it plugged in? Yes. So you want to move it, can you move it back that way? Just put it on, like, like right on it, like that? Yeah, can you watch your thumbs, Charles? Okay. Now is the moment of truth to see how my measuring was. Yeah. It's perfect! 
Now, that's probably the first time I've ever measured something properly. Now we have um, you can see down here, Aurora is my camera girl, um, mm -hmm. how this one has an angle on it. Not too close. This one has an angle on it, so we want to put the same angle on both ends of this one. And we're using the chop saw for that. So I get to use that again. Yay. Mm. <laughs> 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 that wasn't it, yeah, wasn't it? <laughs> I am so enthusiastic. Just experiment a little. I would say you just did a 45. Yeah, that's like just Except perfect. So. Nice. Woohoo. Thanks, Rory. Like a boss. Look at that. Like a boss. Just. Are your hands okay there? Yep. <laughs> we'll take one more little swipe off this one to make them. <laughs> make them match. Just, just a, like, less than a blade's width. No, we're not. No, not there. Just gotta move a little bit. There? Yeah, try that. Okay. Saw. Oh. That's why the other one went wide. That's good. Okay, we need extension cord. We had it. Good girl. Plug in the extension cord. Do you want to hold this for me? Sure. Just for a sec. I hope it's not on. It's not. In order to turn the sign. Okay, so you can take these, and I need my glasses if you're on the hip. <laughs> okay. I am going to Dutch oil. No, I keep saying Dutch oil, it's not Dutch oil, it's Danish oil. Um, this now and I am super sensitive to fumes of particularly varathanes and stains and stuff like that and this oil I tried to use the other day and it was just brutal I actually end up throwing up from it which is awful so I wear these big masks when I do stuff like this and gloves Okay, so we have the stain all done on this. And the nice thing about using this Danish oil, I said it right that time, is that it actually dries um, really fast. It's not like a paint. So we have to go up to the house now and pre-drill all the holes in this and in the masonry, and then we will be able to put it on. Um, these are the granite hammer drill bit, and then these are special masonry screws. These are the little um, anchors, just like a drywall anchor, except for masonry. We have all of our concrete anchors in now. Sure. And we just are going to countersink these holes and that just makes it so that the head of the screw goes in. We bought some little plugs to go in and they are, you can see this one up here. They go in like that and then cover it up. And luckily enough, these ones actually look really good in hand. So I'll just put a little bit of oil on there. But it worked out really well. When we were um, trying to drill, to counter sink our screw, so that just basically means that we wanted to sink the head of the screw down a little bit so that we could put in the little plugs that we got to cover the holes. When we were doing it, because our bit was so um, sharp, it was actually just chewing the wood right up, and I'll show you here. You can just see how, how rough it is. Dan uh, went down to the shop and found a much duller bit, and it's working which is great because we didn't want to have to go all the way to town or wait wait to actually get this up um, to go get an actual countersinking drill bit, which you can also buy. But a dull bit 
actually works. So that's great. Now we can actually put this up on the wall. I, I forgot all about that. It was totally epic. Okay, let's try this again. Look at that beauty. We are done. And it's super solid. It's, yeah, except for the trim. We do have to get the trim done. But, um, so now comes my favorite part and that's where I get to set it all up. So I'll let you guys watch me do that and then I'm gonna light a fire in the fireplace and sit back and enjoy this. And the kids are eating their banana bread. How is it? How does it taste? Is it good? Oh, awesome. Okay, and I'm gonna have some banana bread. All finished. I don't think I have ever done a home renovation project that I am as happy with as I am with this. I love it and it cost us very little to do. Um, it was just one gallon of paint. We had a sponge already so I didn't even have to buy a sponge and then this was actually um, going to be a shelf for the desk that we put in with the shelf above um, and we traded pork for the woodworking on this. It's It was actually a really economical um, remodel which and I'm so happy with it I just think it looks beautiful I wanted to tell you about this sign up here my good friend Maxine made this sign See that? Um, for me and I have been waiting for just the perfect place to put it and it's now found its place on the mantle and every time I look at it I'm gonna think of you Max because you have got to be one of the dearest human beings on the planet so thank you very much for this. The last thing that we have to do is Dan is just gonna put in a screw into the masonry up there for the sign to hang on. And then this part of this project is finished. And all we have left to do now is to um, do a little bit of trim on the rest of the space. So in the next reno video that you'll see, you'll be able to see the finished um, area here with the flooring and the desk and everything else. And then this space will be done and then we'll be moving on to doing the little facelift on the kitchen. So I am so pleased and very grateful to my husband for helping with this because this was a project that was a little bit above my skill level, but I actually learned a lot about using saws and drilling and countersinking screws and everything else that I learned how to do on this. So it's great. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed actually doing this project and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.